Hi, everybody. I'm Rob Sabin from Projector Central, and I am here today uh, with Jeffrey Shea, the director of uh, consumer projector business at uh, BenQ for North America. And uh, Jeffrey, really happy to have you here today to talk a little bit about what BenQ has been doing in the gaming world and specifically about the new X3000i projector, which uh, I know we've had a lot of interest from readers and on and um, uh, looking forward to really getting the, the good download from you. So so let's talk a little bit first about what BenQ has been up to for the last couple of years in the gaming community, because I know that there's been some significant advances in what you've been able to do with your gaming projectors. And I know that it, it hasn't come out of a vacuum either. You have a long history as a company working with the gaming community. Talk a little bit about that, because I think it, it, it's definitely had a reflection on the products. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Rob, uh, for having me here. Yeah, so um, BenQ um, been doing the display business for uh, years and um, over um, 11, 12 years ago, uh, we uh, start our uh, gaming uh, monitor business uh, in the eSport um, industry. And then um, 2016, uh, on the projector side, we start our very first uh, gaming projectors and which is the HT2150 ST. And that is the very first uh, BenQ gaming projector. And uh, also that is also given by Projector Central with the Editor Choice Award. That projector, right. yeah, that projector was the uh, uh, very first one. Uh, we really seriously think about how we can do more to support uh, those console gamers because the BenQ believe, you know, other than uh, so-called uh, uh, response time or you're going to call input lag, right, on right. projector side. Um, there should be some other things gamers like care about. So that's why on the, back in 2016, um, BenQ put the HT2150 ST in the market uh, to show to uh, more kind of uh, gamers how they can really uh, consider the projector as a gaming display. And then Additional to that, um, in the recent years, especially the last two years, there were so many different uh, new AAA games released on the game publisher side. So this is really, really uh, giving BenQ another good reason to put more efforts uh, on this so-called new gaming projector category. Mm -hmm. So what's the... What's the what's the what's the new thing about the the recent new triple A uh, game titles, right? So, other than uh, those traditional RPG, FPS, or those action games or racing games, sports games, right? Uh, many different uh, game publishers they actually put a, a lot of efforts to make their games with more story that people or gamers they could actually by themselves. And then um, having said that, uh, on BenQ side here, uh, we've been doing uh, several different uh, um, efforts on our traditional home theater projectors, right? With our uh, cinematic color technology. And uh, when we actually doing the transition from the uh, 1080p to 4K um, on the projector side, uh, we also introduced our HDR Pro technology. So mm -hmm. with these two technology, and uh, also after we talk about uh, what the gamers they need with uh, several different uh, BenQ um, gaming project owners, we actually found out, yes, we need to do more. We need to put more efforts in order to deliver um, the, the, the picture quality or audio quality uh, on our BenQ projectors to meet their gamers' need. Yeah. I see. So, so really, what you're saying is that there's been an evolution in, in actually the games and the production of the games uh, that has really made it more important to pay better attention to the image quality, correct? Uh, and allow people to get into these immersive games uh, in a more dramatic way. Correct. Yes. yes. 
that is the really a good uh, um, good reason for Bank to believe, right? Um, mm -hmm. Whatever we've been doing on the home theater side, uh, we need to continue that uh, in the, our new new gaming projectors here for right. the gamers. Yeah. Well, well, let's talk a little bit about uh, mm -hmm. before we get into some of the details on on the X three thousand and the other the other projectors in the line. Uh, talk a little bit about using a projector for gaming because you know I I think up until now, of course. Projectors have have tended to not be taken seriously by the gaming community, and I know it's been about response time, input lag, and some of these other qualities that we're talking about. Uh, but uh, there are some natural benefits, I would assume, to to gaming on a projector, assuming that the device can can keep up with you, right? Right, right. So um, it's a, it's quite interesting. So one of the things we found out after we talked to those gamers is. They actually, um, they've been they've been a ga they've been gamers for years since they um, they were kids, and then um, during the journey uh, and also after they they grew up, they actually uh, been uh, dreaming to have a large display at home for they to continue their so called gaming this kind of a habit. So yeah, so this is a this is something that we actually. A continuous to see, you know, uh, a lot of examples. Some cinema still offering that kind of option, right, for the yeah. people to to game in their theater room. And so the community has always wanted a larger something with a larger it. image to be able to to get into it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's that's why um, Ben Gusan here. We are able to really uh, talk to different gamers and also. Uh, put the several different uh, BenQ gaming project models to meet with the different uh, so-called uh, gamers they, their needs. For example, mm -hmm. um, uh, a, a group of people, a group of gamers, they uh, actually game uh, to party, right? So they uh, meet up with friends or family um, uh, to have the those kind of a gaming party, and we do have the uh, uh, our HT or TH or a five and six series to support that kind of a, a scenario. And also there's another group of gamers, they actually uh, intended to game to challenge not only themselves, but also other gamers. So that's how we call the competitive uh, gamers. And for these type of gamers, we also, yeah, we do also have a T7 series uh, to support uh, their mm -hmm. needs with a right. different feature set. So that's and, going to be the TK700 and the TK700 STI, basically. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's the one uh, we designed for them. And uh, additionally, which is a very interesting group of people, um, which uh, kind of uh, echo back to what I just shared earlier, open world games. So mm -hmm. the uh, open world games is not actually a new term. It's been a, a gaming industry for years. Uh, no matter people play on their mobile phone or on their PC or uh, with their consoles. Um, people always have, a, uh, or this certain group of gamers, they actually intend to do more other than compete, other than um, actually with uh, ha have fun with their friends and family. So those are kind of, a, those type of a gamer we call uh, open world gamers. Mm -hmm. So what things they care about when they play open world games those open world triple uh, A games, um, we found out they actually additional to the response time or low input lag. Of course, they care about the resolution because they intend to explore more things uh, during the the gaming. And additional to resolution, they also really really care about the uh, image quality. For example, mm -hmm. in the four K triple A open world games. HDR is quite important to those open world gamers. I see. That's how, yeah, that's how we have uh, our uh, so-called top of uh, our gaming lineup here. It's called X series, mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, which you just mentioned, right? X three thousand I, which is launched in the CES earlier this year. Uh, our X series is with not only good input lag, not only uh, uh, good uh, picture quality, but also is the best in class. Um, thank you sign here to support the best uh, HDR uh, and also the 4K uh, picture quality. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, so stepping up, and of course, we we tested last year the X thirteen hundred I, which was the first sort of uh, attempt at this particular form factor for you, and and it includes uh, many of the features in the X three thousand. But of course, it's a ten eighty p projector. So stepping up, you're saying that stepping up to a four K uh, version of that was a critically important piece for the gamers to be able to get that kind of additional detail, right? That's correct. Great. So let's talk a little bit about the X3000i because, uh, sure. you know, there's a lot of technology in there. Let me ask you first about, you know, it's one of the rare projectors, DLP projectors we've seen that's using, you know, the larger uh, 0.65 I, inch DMD. Um, and I know that's a more expensive chip, so it doesn't make it into every projector. Why was was that used here? Uh, is there some benefit to, to that particular chipset? Thank you. Thank you, Rob, for asking that question. That's very, very important for us during the um, this X3000i product development. Um, like I said earlier, uh, we've been talking to different gamers about what they care, right? Especially those open world gamers. Mm -hmm. So the picture quality, resolution, and HDR performance is quite important and critical for them to have a really good in-game experience. So um, that's why we actually actually figured out uh, using the 0.65 DMD chip is the only solution can deliver that kind of a um, so-called cinematic color and uh, a good the picture quality for the for the open world triple A games. Mm -hmm. That is currently still the only solution to not only the best contrast, but also the best uh, the brightness. So having mm -hmm. said that, you can see you can really really see the 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 pretty good reason we use that to deliver the good HDR 4K image for the open right. gamers. Yeah. I see, because the, the 0 0.65 basically can, can deliver a brighter image as needed. Uh, talk a little bit about the light engine in this too, because the other big breakthrough here, and, and we, you know, we've been tracking, of course, the developments in all the solid state light engines, and laser has its benefits, of course, uh, but LED has its benefits. The big struggle has been getting really good brightness out of LED. And frankly, you know, we were, you know, sort of blown away with how much brightness you got out of the X1300i. I know this is essentially the same light engine. It's an LED light engine that uh, really bring, brings the benefit of, of really even, you know, some of the old traditional lamp projectors. Uh, so it's a, it's a, you know, we haven't seen that before. Um, how are you able to get that kind of brightness? 3000 ANSI lumens. And I should point out for readers, you know, we see a lot of LED projectors that are rated with LED lumens, which is an attempt to sort of inflate the number to make sure that people understand that LED engines have a perception of being brighter. That's the way the eye sees. Here we have a 3000 lumen projector that is ANSI. So it's the full brightness on an ANSI measurement, which means it really ends up looking brighter than that, you know, to the to the naked eye. Um, but how do you how do you get up uh, that kind of get up to that level of, of brightness with an LED engine? Yeah. So yeah, that's also another thing that um, we actually put a lot of efforts after comparing different the solution we have, additional to the zero point six five DMD chip. So um, the full LED uh, this solution um, is uh, was available was available for. Uh, some of the um, smaller um, so-called uh, portable projectors. Mm -hmm. And uh, additionally, um, we, a, uh, we are able to uh, leverage the, uh, uh, the, the BenQ, our um, projector lineup we have. For example, we used to have a laser, right, on the several different higher-end models. And uh, uh, during the time, we figured out, well, in order to get the, this gaming projector solution to a broader kind of a, a gamer or potential buyers, it's really, really worth for BenQ to try the 4 LED with a 0.5 DMD to see if we can deliver a very, very uh, good quality and also affordable gaming projector for them. Yeah. So 4 LED um, light engine it, uh, is using the RGBB. The additional blue LED actually was the key 
um, factor to boost the brightness. And also with the BenQ, our unique uh, cinematic color technology, we are able also to manage so-called the color accuracy as well. So um, let's talk a little bit about the HDR because uh, you did that, that, that all is part of this. Um, you, uh, in order to achieve 100% DCI P3, which is what this projector boasts, uh, and for those listeners who don't really uh, understand what that means, you know, HDR content is produced with wide color gamut. It uh, allows you to see deeper blues, deeper reds. Um, and uh, the ideal in today's projectors is, a, is 100% of the DCI P3 color space because the content is produced to that particular standard. So that's as that's as good as it gets for the most part, the 100, 100% DCI. We have projectors that go beyond, but there's not not any real content that goes beyond that. So hitting that is a number is, is a good thing. Um, what do you gain in the, why is it so important to the gamers? And and what do you gain when gain when you do when you do uh, get full DCI P3 coverage in these games, especially these open world games you're talking about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um HDR uh, is pretty common term, right? For um, not only the traditional home theater user, but also the gamers as well. Because the think about the current the gaming display solutions, no matter from the monitor or from TV or even mm-hmm. from the bank to projector at this moment, HDR is pretty common. But uh, during our conversation with the gamers in the past few years, um, the way they are looking for or they describe the, their needs is talking about the, the detail. So the detail on the um, gaming display is really, really um, related to several different things, right? Resolution we talked about earlier, that's how sure. we want to introduce the 4K version of our X series. Additional to the resolution, in order to deliver the best so-called detailed uh, HDR um, game image or game uh, pictures, the the combination of the um, the contrast, the comp- uh, the combination of the so-called the tone mapping, color mapping, those are quite important uh, for the display manufacturer like BenQ to think about it. So, um, other than the cinematic color technology, BenQ also have HDR Pro technology. The way we are putting our efforts. Uh, to achieve the so-called uh, um, the gain uh, HDR, uh, those kind of performers, um, is looking at the combination or balance between the contrast and also the colors. When mm-hmm. we talk about the combination or to call the balance, this is something that most of a most of the gamers uh, might not understand. Mm-hmm. So you're getting with HDR Pro, you're able to make some adjustments and get some some range basically out of the tone mapping. Right, we are mm-hmm. maximizing the uh, the contrast in order to uh, to deliver the best HDR uh, picture performers without losing so called the uh, colors or uh, skin tones, those kind mm-hmm. of things. Those open world gamers they also also uh, care about. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's talk a little bit about input lag because that's been that's been the major breakthrough uh, in the last year or so. Uh, right. Being able to really, really put a projector up against a, a, a flat panel TV and even some gaming monitors and and have it basically be competitive. So uh, first of all, let me ask you this: How is it that mm-hmm. you know all of a sudden in the last year or so? we're able to achieve these kinds of low input lags. Talk a little bit first about what the X3000i does. And it's also the same thing in terms of input lag that the X1300i does, that the TK7 models do. Um, We're talking about ridiculously low input lag now. Oh, yeah. So you think about the DLP projectors, which BenQ uh, Mm has been um, using for years. So... um, DLP projectors, there are several different components in terms of the video processing. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the key component is the, the DMD chip. 
And the second other components could be some other video process like scalers, right? Right. So um, in order to deliver the best of the best in terms of input lag, you need to, you need to think about you know how to minimize the process time without without you know sacrificing your um, video or picture quality, right? Right. So having said that, uh, last year actually there's uh, some big kind of a uh, um, uh, I would say a uh, milestone for the DLP projectors. Um, we actually have the new uh, DMD chip from the Texas Instrument to uh, actually uh, minimize the processing time um, um, for the DLP projectors. Mm -hmm. and additionally, uh, BenQ also uh, put uh, several different efforts on the uh, so-called video processing uh, algorithm to mm -hmm. make sure uh, whenever um, the image or uh, input source is actually sent to the our uh, BenQ gaming projectors uh, during the processing, um, the colors and the, the also the uh, HDR those kind of uh, uh, reproduction can be uh, really produced in a perfect way for the gamers. Mm -hmm. And if, and currently X three thousand I and also the TK uh, seven hundred or TK seven hundred Ti. Can, uh, both, uh, all of them can achieve a 4K 60 hertz at uh, 60 milliseconds. Yeah. If the people are using um, some other um, uh, resolution uh, do, uh, with their console, for example, 1080p 60 hertz or 1080p 120 hertz, yeah, those uh, uh, input lag will actually get lower uh, down to the four milliseconds. Wow. So, so yes, yeah, so you do. You guys are doing. Uh, it's basically four K sixty or ten eighty P sixty at sixteen milliseconds. milliseconds. You can get ten eighty P one twenty at eight point two milliseconds, and then ten eighty P two forty hertz at four point two milliseconds. So, so Jeffrey, a lot of people have been, uh, of course, with, in the world of gaming, asking about uh, the ability to play back 4K 120, uh, 4K at 120 hertz, um, and that's associated with HDMI 2.1 as a feature because it's understood that you need that to get the bandwidth for that. Right. But my understanding in some of the other conversation we've had is that uh, it's really a, a challenge to do that and uh, really achieve the same uh, specifications for these gaming projectors. Uh, what, what's been preventing us from, from bringing that out at this time and, and what has to happen to make it happen? Yeah, thank you, Rob, uh, for bringing that uh, question. So uh, at this moment, um, I would say the limitation is really, really on the core component, which is the DMD. Mm -hmm. uh, from the Texas instrument. So um, to support the 4K 120 hertz and also to be able to handle the all the signal uh, from the HDMI 2.1 port, there is some kind of improvement Improvement uh, for sure need to be done on that DMD chip. So at this moment, um, yeah, we could, we could, we could have a uh, HDMI 2.1 edit right on the X3000i, but the thing is, in order to handle the HDMI 2.1, uh, the DLP projectors uh, need to really um, add uh, need to be added with a se several different additional component in order to handle it. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you think about Earlier, we talked about gaming projectors, right? The input lag like, is really, really the basic the gamers need it. And BenQ think that's a really the fundamental thing uh, to be qualified as a gaming projector. So um, with that said, um, if we are really um, adopting the HDMI 2.1 on the X3000i, then um, I think the trade-off is uh, the input lag, like, uh, you will be, see, gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be higher. Right, it's not gonna be 60 milliseconds at 4K uh -huh. 60 hertz or 1080p 120 hertz. So, uh, with this concern, that's how that's why BenQ uh, actually is delaying uh, the plan to add uh, a 4K uh, 120 hertz or um, HDMI 2.1 on our gaming projector lineup. 
Uh-huh. And that's a and that's a combination then of the uh, existing DMD as well as the fact that there's a d- processing involved that Correct. basically slows down the signal. Exactly. Right. So so it's it's a question of waiting. How long do you think it'll be before, uh, for example, Texas Instruments is able to deliver the kind of uh, componentry that could really uh, deliver 4K 120 with 16 milliseconds uh, or lower lag, for example. Correct. Correct. Yeah, we we are also waiting for that solution as well. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 would, do you have any idea how long that's going to take? Well, at this moment, I, I would say at least at least twelve or eighteen months for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not okay. Be in 2022. Yeah. All right. So 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 not anytime soon is is no. the answer. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm glad you cleared that up for a lot of readers. And I should point out then, a lot of viewers rather, I should also point out that uh, what you're talking about is really endemic to the whole industry. Everybody's waiting for the same the same new chipsets and uh, faster processors, right? Correct. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the game modes on the projector, because this is one of the things that really obviously screams that this is a gaming projector. Uh, it's the first time we've seen this kind of feature uh, where you have some very specific modes that you can engage for very specific types of gameplay uh, that are intended to help you uh, you know, uh, compete in that particular genre. So, so talk about it a little bit, what it is that you're doing with the picture uh, I know that the the modes are uh, FPS, right? First person shooters. There's role playing games, and then there's, there's sports. Those are the three main three main modes. What do they do to the image quality uh, and or to the sound? And we'll talk a little bit too before we close out about the audio in the X three thousand. But um, yeah, uh, yeah. What are these modes actually doing then? Yeah. So talking about the the game modes. Um, uh, before we talk about the, each of the game modes, I want to give you another uh, quick background here. So okay. back in 2016, on our first HT2150 ST, the gaming projector in the market, mm-hmm. there um, there was actually a game mode available. But at that time point, uh, because the, um, the technology or because the limitation, we are able to put the game mode, this single uh, solution, on the picture setting for mm-hmm. gamers to choose. Um, right. right, and now, a lot of projectors today do have game modes uh, that right. are designed mainly to reduce input lag. Correct. Um, and, and also, obviously, to tune the picture for one particular type right, of right. general game. Yeah, exactly. So at that moment, right, we only have game mode. But why right. at this moment, no matter X3000i or the previous one, the 1080p X1300i, we are able to deliver different uh, game modes other than the so-called single game mode, right? So right now we have uh, a um, really good uh, uh, quality of the gaming projector, allow bank to, to adjust different setting in order to deliver a different uh, picture quality that different type of gamers they are looking for or they need right. in order to uh, have the best gaming experience. Say for example, we talk about the uh, uh, open world gamers, uh, if they play the so-called RPG, those role-playing games, mm-hmm. the thing they care about is about the skin tone, about the uh, the details, right? Because they are trying to explore more things in the game. So the way we put the RGB game mode uh, is we are able to enhance the uh, detail and also enhance the, the skin tones as well. So... Uh, second thing is uh, second option for uh, in our game mode is so called uh, uh, FPS mode. So for those kind of uh, FPS gamers, uh, uh, other than the low input lag, what else they need, right? So uh, we actually talk to them and we figure, oh, wait a second, they need uh, some more information when they play uh, in those game scenes that you know with a very very dark background because they are trying to compete, they try to win over the, over the, uh, they, 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 uh, they are other players. So that's how we are able to uh, have a second option for them, uh, dedicated for the FPS gamers mm-hmm. by increasing the detail uh, in those kind of a dark game scenes. 
Mm-hmm. The last so, one is yeah. The last one is the uh, sports mall. So sports mall actually relate to uh, not only the traditional sports game, but also relate to some of the racing game. So in the right. sports mall, we uh, actually uh, realize that people are more care about uh, so called the uh, sound of the background and also of course the skin tone as well. Right. Think about if you are playing the sound soccer ball game. FIFA game or NBA games, you don't want to see the players on your gaming display look so off, right? Compared right. to how you see on the TV. Right. So, so that's how we try to make the um, best efforts to make sure um, those skin tone looks more accurate, and also the background, no matter the flow colors uh, in the basketball court or the the colors on the grass in the the football field, right. those kind of a colors looks more actually close to the real. Uh-huh. That's how we actually put the different efforts on those three different game modes. And nice. of course, we open the option for the gamers as well. They uh-huh. can customize their uh, pre- uh, preferred uh, so-called uh, game or picture setting. Right now, now those modes also have some effect on the sound coming out of the built-in speakers if you choose to use that. Talk a little bit about uh, the speaker system that's in the the X three thousand. I I assume it's the same as as what we heard in the X thirteen hundred. That's correct. Yeah, the okay. same, and it's also supported by a BenQ Trevolo technology, uh, right. audio technology. So um, the way we did, because we um, um, earlier you you heard that we other than the input lag, um, the gamers care about the um, the picture quality and also talking about the audio as well, because with the input lag, low input lag and the good audio and the good picture quality, that kind of three things together can really deliver deliver the best so called uh, uh, in game experience. So. Um, with the different the um, the game modes we offer, right? RPG, FPS, or sports, we also uh, um, no uh, deliver uh, different options on audio setting as well. So, say for example, if people choose the uh, RPG game modes, not only on the skin tone on the picture quality side will be adjusted, but also on the audio side, uh, our speaker uh, actually our um, audio chip will also adjust the uh, the low end, mid end, and high end uh, frequency, the audio frequency, to mm-hmm. make sure the sound from the our X three thousand I speaker will be more cinematic, because mm-hmm. they are playing the RPG games. Right. But how about the 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 sports game, right? Say for example, we play the racing game, we play the um, the NBA games or football game. The way we did is we actually changed the setting on the audio side. Uh, for the low, mid, and the high frequency to make sure people's when when, when they hear about the, the audience in the background or when they hear about some team player talking about uh, uh, some, 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 something, they can clearly they can clearly hear what they, other players are talking about in the game. Right. So you're tracking stadium yeah. sounds and the uh, and the players uh, uh, making their their comments and noises and everything else. Exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And for the shooting game is more about the so called the uh, surrounding um, that kind of a thing. So our um, audio um, chip can uh, adjust um, the setting to make sure um, the the gamers they are able to hear uh, some of the for example your uh, other players are approaching you. You are able to identify which way they're coming from. Right. Those so, di- right, directional cues and and hearing people uh, sneaking up around you, basically. Exactly. So, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, there's probably there's uh, there's probably one more thing we should just mention about this uh, one more feature that we haven't talked about, and uh, that's just the fact that it's this is a smart projector. Um, Oh, yeah. Right, because we have we have the uh, QS01 streaming dongle that's included with that. That's an Android streaming stick, right? Correct. There's a um, um, BenQ QS01 Android TV dongle included. 
uh, when uh, people purchase the X three thousand I. So um, the way uh, in our design story uh, or um, concept here is um, why people want to game with projector because they want to game in big. They want immersive the uh, gaming experience. But additionally, um, they also want to enjoy that kind of immersive, the entertaining uh, kind of experience with the friends and family. So no question about that, right? Sure. So that's how BenQ actually have the design, uh, which is the very uh, integrated component uh, on the X three thousand I. People can actually enjoy those kind of uh, streaming contents uh, when um, they finish their gaming. Yeah, that's nice. It's you know obviously you're gonna you're gonna purchase this probably because you're interested in gaming to start with, but it adds uh, some great utility as a home theater product, really. And most people are getting their content today from from online streaming. So yeah, it's 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 another really really nice feature. I I think one of the things that's maybe most impressive about the X three thousand I, honestly, is the price too, because. Uh, you know, with a nineteen hundred and ninety nine dollar uh, MSRP, as I understand it, it, it's it's a lot of projector for not a whole lot of money, especially given uh, some of the advanced uh, technology in the light engine and you know the ability to hit some of these low input lag numbers. Uh, it, you know, it's really really an impressive value, I think. Thank you, thank you, Rob. Yeah. Yep. So we always want to deliver. Uh, not only the best in best, right? I think class, the type of a gaming projectors, but also um, BenQ is still very, very open to uh, to hear all the feedback from all the different gamers in order for us to improve as well. At this sure. moment, yeah, 3000i at 1999 is our very first one. We hope that will actually meet and also um, uh, have a, most of the gamers are able to right away right game on projectors but mm-hmm. uh yeah we still open we are still open here to um work with the several different gamers to um to improve our product here okay well well great well we we're gonna have uh i know that by the time this video comes out we should have our review of the x3000i up online and i should also mention that we have uh, some other resources including uh in our gaming buyer's guide uh uh, an article about what BenQ has been up to um, uh, in the gaming world, and that kind of explains some of the different products and some of the things we've talked about today. So I would refer people to that as well. Uh, and um, of course, as other, uh, we have our review of the X1300i online as well for anybody who's looking to save a little money and maybe do the 1080p version. So um, we can refer people to that. Uh, Jeffrey, thank you so much for the time today and uh, for the interesting uh, deep dive on this brand new projector. No problem. No problem. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. So give me this chance to talk about the BenQ Game Projector. Thank you so Very much. Very good. All right. Thanks.